Okay, my top five. I think personally, this is my opinion, mm -hmm. um, if children feel safe, the emotional environment, if children feel safe, they'll learn. Yeah. So for children to feel safe, I mean, I think this is gonna this is gonna sound ridiculous, right? Okay. <laughs> but um, for children to get into deep level learning, mm -hmm. they need to be able to concentrate. And what often happens in settings, and I've worked with quite a lot of settings, and people don't even know they're doing it, is um, there's a lot of comings and goings. Yes, I know what you, you mean. Know, yes, there's a lot of comings and goings. So people are in and out of the room. Mm -hmm. They're kind of talking to each other yes. over the children's heads, um, and for children who are sensitive or who've had difficult time. And, and to be honest, a lot of children have had a difficult time. Mm -hmm. They might be concentrating for a bit like this, and then suddenly their eyes are up, their heads are up. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I, I work with a setting um, who had some busy children. Um, and what I noticed when I was observing the setting mm -hmm. um, was that every they had a doorbell. Oh, wow. Bing bong. Every time the doorbell went... Yeah. Up goes the up goes the emotional atmosphere, mm. and so the environment was not inducing safety and calmness. Mm -hmm. So they were fantastic. This setting were amazing, and they were they were just a, a small setting in a church hall kind of idea. Mm -hmm. They took the battery out of the door. No, did they take the battery out of the doorbell? And the woman held it in her pocket so she could hear it vibrate, or they mm -hmm. did something. Yes, it just stopped the massive difference. Yeah. I mean, it was massive. I can only imagine, because that going off constantly, people coming in, I mean, you just, of course, it's yes, distracting constantly. and you can't relax. No, you can't. And that, uh, and I know that everyone does it, but it particularly happens in early years because there's more people to mm -hmm. children, if that makes yes, sense. So yes. when you're teaching in primary school, it's you and your class. Definitely. When you're in the early years, there's you. If you're in, if you're in a, a, a nursery setting, you've often got four or five people yeah. in the same room looking after lots of children, and there's constant talk over the children's head. Yes. I, and I, yeah, definitely. When you were it saying does, it, I just it was bringing it all to mind of people coming in as well from other places, and they'd say, mm -hmm. "Oh, can we borrow this?" Or coming in for yes. tours at the same time. Oh, who's taking what outside? Yeah it's constant and it's it's constant yada 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 mm. and 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 there's also and i don't know if you've worked in settings where you might have a telephone yeah we had a phone and the brrr, oh and that takes the person away mm -hmm. and everyone's looking and you know and if you're the one that's reading the story oh, to yes. a few children it's hopeless and helpless and it's always so the end of the day, yeah. my, my my top <laughs> my top five my first one yeah was to make the environment safe emotionally and physically mm -hmm. because for some children that in the outs and, and also how can you concentrate with this constant hubbub 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 yeah. and and you know i've sat at meal times with children and staff mm -hmm. and the staff are talking over the top of their heads of the children about what they've been doing the night before mm -hmm. about their wedding dress shopping with their mate and the kids are just sat there really quietly like this mm -hmm. it's so rubbish for them so my my top sort of thing would be to make it safe. There's no reason. If people want to come in and out, that's fine. Mm -hmm. um, but there needs to be a narrative for the children. Yeah. Or if you're going out, you know, you're a key person. You've got um, mm -hmm. little, I don't know, Julia's there. <laughs> oh, hi, Julia. Oh, Julia, I'm just going to have to go to the toilet. Is that okay? I'll see you in a minute. Yeah. That's respectful Definitely to children. Including them. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. Or um, oh, um, Julia, there's going to be um, someone's coming to fix the light later, so just watch out. There'll be a ding on the door, mm -hmm. just to let you know. All right, so no it need changes to worry. Everything, not just some stranger coming and you haven't seen. Yeah, before. it's like whoa, who are you, you person who's come to fix my light? Well, exactly, it's a safe environment, and then when someone new comes in that you weren't warned about, I mean, yeah. you think, oh, is that exactly. always going to happen? Should I always be a bit on edge? You know. Yeah. Exactly. And it just means the children aren't relaxed. Hmm. When they're not relaxed, their brains can't work to maximum capacity. So if you're talking about, you know, children's learning being at its max, you need to make it so that, that everything's very kind of stable hmm. and not this inny outy, inny outy. And I used to 
uh, try not to. When I was in management and I was on the end of the phone, Mm -hmm. I would rather walk down and go and see someone and talk to them quietly um, than use the phone. Because Mm -hmm. using the phone is so disruptive for the children. Yes, I mean, that's lovely. And I think everyone had, I wish everyone had that same understanding as well. Yeah, because it's just ridiculous and it what it's saying the the subliminal messages is that phone call is more important than that child yes i think they're learning that's been a thing with phones coming in people think because it rings i have to answer it as well actually especially when you're with children and it's the end of the day as well that's like oh someone's here to pick someone up or whatever it is you're like we can't have that quiet moment before you get to go and that's a shame yeah that's right i know it's right so so that would be my first one make it safe that's my top 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 (laughs) Um, I think I would make it, I think, I think an, a learning environment needs to be kind of purposeful. It needs to have, per- what, I think one of the, the later questions was what do Ofsted want? Yes, classic. Classic, <laughs> what do Ofsted want? Right. Sorry, I'm moving, I'm moving down my questions. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think it has to be purposeful. Mm. So why are you putting that out? For what yeah. purpose? So if it, if if you're putting something out because you think it's a great idea, mm-hmm. but it has no actual... Per- it's like, it's, I mean, I was just thinking today about Christmas time in nursery, you know. I was thinking about seasons as well and different kind of yeah. celebrations. Yeah, exactly. So I always felt that we could only have something that, that was Christmassy if it was purposeful and it meant something and it, it kind of was edu- of, of educational learning value, if that mm-hmm. makes sense. Yes, it does, definitely. You know, having a Christmas tree put up for the children mm-hmm. so that they come in and go, wow, that what what's that? I mean, it's okay, it's nice, but it doesn't really do anything. Mm-hmm. Having the children put the Christmas tree up and assemble it together from scratch mm-hmm. is purposeful. Definitely. You know, having a, having a, a kind of a present wrapping station so that everyone can learn to wrap presents to put under the Christmas tree mm-hmm. is purposeful. Having a station where people can write their letters or draw their pictures for Santa is purposeful. Yeah. But just having things done for them isn't necessarily that purposeful. Yeah. So that sounds like I'm being grinchy. I'm not being <laughs> grinchy. I just I just think that whatever you have in your in your environment yes. needs to needs to have purpose no but I think that's relevant for all year round because people often go to all these celebrations and especially yeah. before Christmas as well there's lots of celebrations and it's keeping that in mind is what are the children actually getting from this yeah or is it just something to send home you know I think you know don't, don't get me started on I'm that not, but you know we know it happens <laughs> so that's it's it's true isn't it it's true you know mm-hmm what what have they actually learned what what is the learning process i mean children are extremely creative and they're able to do amazing things but you know we say you know put your thumbprint on here and put and you think how how that's i mean that's nothing to do with the environment no, but that's also a end of the line what do the parents want or think they want too because yeah. sometimes they're like oh well this is lovely you know like, but what did that child get from it it's yeah. something else but you can make really nice things you know yes Yes, you can. It's not that just it can't like, be done. It's just how how you go about it. But yeah, so I think number one would be make it safe. Mm-hmm. Num- and that's emotionally, physically, in all ways. Yeah. Um, and number two would be make it purposeful, so that everything has a has a reason. Mm-hmm. You know, there's there's you don't just put it there because it's always been there. But yeah. what what's it doing? Um, so, like, um, I, I, one of the things I always think that's worth thinking about is. Why do you have so many chairs? Mm. That is interesting. Yeah, because you don't you don't need as many chairs as you think you need. Because pe- children don't need to sit down. Yes, as much as they do, they can sit on the floor. Mm-hmm. But we seem to want chairs around every single table. Well, yeah. they don't necessarily need. They can stand up and draw. Mm-hmm. They can stand up and write, and they probably do their better work standing up. For some, particularly. Yes you know boys don't don't need to sit down in some countries they don't sit down until they're much older yeah. so to if you put chairs there the expectation is they sit down but yeah. when you're thinking about planning for your environment you have to think are the chairs purposeful what purpose are they 
are they are they there to help us to contain the children mm -hmm. or are they there for their educational benefit Exactly what they're getting out of it. I definitely think about the boys because the boys often feel a bit like, oh, don't want to get in this chair. This feels like I'm going to have to be here for ages. Oh, no, and it's terrible. And then they start wriggling around the place and then it becomes dangerous and you've got to need chairs. I mean, I know we need chairs to eat food, which is different, but you can put the chairs away and bring them out, you know. Yeah. So I think that, so I think purposeful is really important. Um I think it's really important, my third one. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm going to get to five here. Um, <laughs> we have to now. <laughs> I think the children need to kind of belong to their environment and own it. Yes. So that it's theirs. Mm -hmm. So, for example, um, uh, some places, and I'd, I'm sure you've worked in them, by the end of the day, they can look like an absolute dump, can't Pigsty. they? <laughs> I mean, like an absolute dump. Um, so, and tidy up time is just this tidy up time and everyone just pretends to tidy up but runs around while the adults tidy up. Yes. <laughs> okay. So I can remember there was one particular time where the ch I wanted the children to develop kind of a sense of ownership um, of their own environments, mm -hmm. a kind of pride in their environments. So we um, uh, planned for... Um, adult-led activities that were washing the chairs because mm -hmm. the chairs get absolutely trashed mm -hmm. with paint and play-doh yes. and that was an adult-led activity small group of children washing chairs with an adult um, and we did it for about two or three or four weeks um, so another one would be sorting out the animals from the dinosaurs mm. this is great right? Mm -hmm. you actually plan for it you know so um washing you know washing the um big blocks that are outside that are horrifically dirty yes. all those sorts of what i would call kind of care of the environment activities mm -hmm. and then helping the children to sort things out and put things in places so that they have some ownership of their own environment is really important yeah because then they're part of the process of keeping it. Yeah, it takes it to a completely new level for them. Oh, 100%. Mm. And the other thing that I always think is really helpful for children in the environment is if they have spaces of belonging. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, like, obviously their pegs are quite important and their drawers, if, they've got, if you've got drawers. Yeah. But, I mean, I personally used to put all my children in small groups and so if they were an owl group or a mm -hmm. soldier ant or a caterpillar or butterfly, mm -hmm. then they, the soldier ants would have an area. Mm -hmm. That was the soldier ant area. They had, they had pictures of soldier ants yeah. and had all the soldier ant things that they, and that was their space. Mm -hmm. And then over there was the butterfly area so that they had spaces of belonging which I think is important so that when you said, right, can all the soldier ants go to the soldier ant area? Can the butterflies go to their area? Everyone knows where they're going, so they belong. Definitely. And I think that's that's important too. That sense of belonging is really important in the environment. Yes. It, it's You want to care for something that you feel like you are a part of. That's right. And it just, it just um, that kind of um, alienation, you know, a lot of children get very isolated, but you can decrease that isolation if they belong somewhere and they have places where they belong, sense spaces yeah. of belonging. So I, I think that's important. That's my... Number three. <laughs> <laughs> On to number four. Okay. I do... Uh, I mean... I mean, it probably goes alongside... I'll go back to number three, because it probably goes alongside that belonging. So, But this is also about how you set up some of the daily routines. So, like, mm. when children eat together yeah. i think that's a really important time and i think your environment uh can be a make or a break thing okay yeah. so if i personally think that it's great for children to have placemats with their own photos and names even if they're only little place cards yes. so that they can go and find themselves and sit down in their spaces mm -hmm. uh, i think you can set up the um meal times so that the environment is supportive of it so you've got a station where they can take their 
leftovers mm -hmm. they can scrape their bowl they can put their bowl or their plate into the bowl and plate washing up bowl and their cup into another one and then their crockery into another mm -hmm. so that they've got that's all part of the process so, and it's mathematics as well but it it also helps them to kind of feel ordered yes do you know what i mean I and that increases that sense of belonging and knowing what's going on really definitely and it helps with their independence because i think sometimes settings that struggle like well they're always wanting me to do everything but if you give them that chance to you know like you say when they're finished be able to do that themselves then it helps everyone yeah of course and i remember i did we had a i was working a, a two-year unit it was a specialist a unit for um two-year-old funded children at the time it was a really small unit and when we had Ofsted it was so funny this Ofsted inspector was absolutely gobsmacked that the children were able to blow their own noses but the reason was one of the amazing practitioners who worked in the unit had set up believe this or not a nose blowing station oh wow what a great it was idea. so cool it was like a packet of tissues yes. and a and a and a a, a, a bin that's what it was but the children had been taught had two that's to go get themselves a tissue blow their nose and put the tissue in the bin and then go and wash their hands i mean honestly <laughs> so it was great. outstanding it was outstanding but there's no reason why your environment can't be set up like that it's yeah. just a question of, of 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 teaching the children how to use it you don't just mm. put it there and go, now we have a nose blowing station. Yeah, why is no one using it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you teach it to them, you, you take them up, you show them how you, and then you reiterate, 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 reiterate. It was the most amazing thing. I've seen some amazing, amazing sort of interventions um, about, you know, like that. So you can have water stations, mm -hmm. which can have cups, jugs of water yeah. so that the children know they pick a cup mm -hmm. they pour their water they drink it they put it in the used cup thing yeah. that's it but it's 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 an enabling environment it enables them to be um independent and it just stops the it, them having to be reliant i suppose so maybe but that's i, I think that is that a third one a fourth one i don't know is it about i don't know Yes, I see what you mean. But it's that they, sort I mean, of they link together, don't they? It's all the same thing, isn't it? I yes. think having that that sort of environment that does that. Yeah. I think sometimes when you're thinking about children's learning, you think about the sort of the sit down type of learning. Yes. But, but learning is the environment can promote all that sort of learning. Yeah. Can't um, it? Definitely, and I just think that there's so much benefit to that from early years and beyond as well because yeah. the environment is obviously not the same when they go up but I mean they can just learn so so much and yeah. if we give them that chance as well which sometimes yeah. they're not given that opportunity I think yeah that's big. so maybe my fourth one then is is having it well structured environment yeah. and that doesn't mean that doesn't mean rigid rigid yeah. what it it means that the children can access what they need to access so it's an enabling environment for their accessibility so they know it's they know how to use the the tissues mm -hmm. they know the the kind of way to use the toilets i mean i think toilets are really important i don't know if yeah. i've said that to you before yes we've talked about it we've I talked about toilets that. they're so important aren't so they important. and you know for children to know that one person goes in one cubicle yeah <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's 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 it. Yeah. <laughs> one to one. <laughs> Are you in the... <laughs> Does your is your toilet? I mean, some people put um, some people label their toilets like one, two, three with big things on with oh, really? dots on them. Like some people that. put them as um, shapes. Yeah. Okay. So are you in are you in toilet one, toilet two, toilet three? Yeah. Some people have. I mean, I know. Um, colleagues who've had potty parties where they get the potties out and they all have a potty party in the in the toilet you know yes. but where are the potties are the potties accessible are they there mm -hmm. all those sorts of things are part of the environment definitely and i mean that is a huge part of early years so central to because i know that a lot of parents bring them in thinking this is 100 percent your job so <laughs> just gonna leave this with you even when they get yeah. you know to that later end of early years <laughs> okay. i know but it's not, but it's not, is it? I mean, but the environment can help you so that you're not constantly, 
you know, what you ultimately want is that children are able to take themselves to the toilets Definitely. and use the toilets well, flush the toilets and wash their hands. You know, even having a nice little kind of visual timetable to teach them how to wash their hands well. Yeah. I mean, oh, that's yeah. sort of come to its fore lately, hasn't it? Oh, Obviously. Definitely. So the children are probably better at it. But, you know, you can you can have little... Um, I did I did some stuff around... This was a long time ago. Um, how germs are spread. <laughs> and um, I had a friend who bought in one of these light boxes that showed the children oh, the germs. Yeah. And he taught them, he's a nurse, and he taught them how to wash their hands like a nurse. Yeah. Well, that's very, you know, kind of... Oh, yeah. You know, all that sort of stuff. But that's all part of the environment, isn't oh, it? definitely. And it definitely needs teaching. I mean, I think, like you said, it's very topical now. But even to adults, they're like, this is how you really wash your hands. Yeah. <laughs> Not just... This is how you wash your hands. Yeah. Washing yeah. your hands. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <the band. laughs> and that's very really important. So I think, so, yeah, those are the kind of really important things, I think, in the that I would go for. That's only four. Yes, yeah, so I was like, is there a sneaky number five? Well, I think there is. I mean, I do think the outdoors environment is really important. Mm-hmm. I'm glad you brought that up because I think that is an issue for... Oh, it's massive. People, it's it? massive. Yeah, and yeah. I know that there were some practitioner questions about the outdoors environment. Yeah. Um, and I think the thing with the outdoor... The thing that stops people with the... There's a lot of things that stop people. Yes. There are barriers to yes. the outdoors environment. Um so people don't like it because they don't like getting cold. Yes. I don't <laughs> want to go outside. <laughs> I don't want to go outside. Yeah. But um, the other thing I found that made a massive difference was, you know, the butcher's curtains. Oh, yeah. I I bought butcher's curtains. Yes. And as soon as we've got a butcher's curtain, mm. it means the door can be open and there's yes. less heat going out. It does change things, definitely. It does change it. It makes a massive difference. Butcher's curtains. I know they're expensive on an initial outlay, mm-hmm. but they don't really break. Once you've got one, you've yeah. got one. You know, unless children are swinging on them, but you'd hope that they wouldn't be doing that because you'd teach them well. But um, the outdoors environment is really important. And it's kind of, I think there's a mentality sometimes where you get what I call playtime mentality. Mm-hmm. So children go outside and they just play like playtime. And then the role of the grown up outside is to be, you know, just to watch them play. Mm-hmm. Well, that's that's not really utilising the outdoors environment in in the way that's the most helpful. So I think, and it's not just about taking toys outside either. Yeah, it's about supporting children's play in in the environment and planning for it. But planning for the outdoors is hard, okay. and it needs as much attention as the indoors. Definitely. So if that that's the sort of thing that I think is important, sort of having natural things outside. Yeah. Um, and using what you've got but the other thing that happens in the outdoors i think is that people put out the bikes and the cars mm-hmm. they sit on cars and then they dominate the outdoor space yes i do agree yes and in a way you you don't really want them out you want you want kind of areas where children can have a digging area, mm-hmm. you know, where children can pick up lots of stones and sticks and all that kind of stuff. But those sort of bikes, they dominate the play. And so the the, the level of play outside is, is often um, kind of reduced because it's just dominated by a couple of children going backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards, backwards, forwards with very little happening. Mm-hmm. Um and that's not great, I don't think. Yeah, and I think also it can be children's own experiences of indoors, outdoors as well. Like you said, yeah. you know, they see sometimes outdoors as playtime because of being at home and then yes. being like, oh, we're going to go outside and we're just going to run around, you know, <laughs> yes, circle right. and thinking, oh, this is the same case at nursery. Like, I just go outside and then I run around with my friends yeah. or I go on the bike. I think what's interesting is if staff can manage it, um, children do run around, but after about 5, 10, 20, 15 minutes, everyone stops running. Yes, it's true. It's just a kind of <laughs> and once they stop running and start playing, mm-hmm. you're having a really nice time. But it's setting up those kind of... I think the most important thing in the environments, both inside and out, is having open-ended play resources Yeah. so that children aren't prescribed mm-hmm. what they do, so that they've got the opportunity to explore, to have exploratory play times times of exploratory play 
And those are really important, both inside and outside. And the opportunity to be able to transport something from here, hither to thither, because that people don't really like that, do they? <laughs> I think it's OK, so I'm going to have to clean that up later. <laughs> They're like, oh, no. Yes. You know, like when when the sand them. or the... Um, yeah. Or, or, or the pasta play gets transported to the cooker. Yeah. But what I what I always think is is bring the cooker to the pasta play mm -hmm. because then when they're playing with pasta, then they're going to naturally put it in the cooker. So why not just bring it over? Yeah. And that can happen inside or outside. Definitely. But it's it's kind of being really flexible, I think. Yes, and seeing what they do with it and where they're going with it as well, yeah. instead of just, I think, a little bit of an adult or reaction automatic. It's like, oh, don't mix those. That's going to be a mess. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it is a pain. I'm not... It I is know, a of course. <laughs> it is, and I know that I, I made myself quite unpopular sometimes um, because I allowed children to do things mm. and the other staff were like... Oh, yes, God. it can be a bit of a disagreement. Oh, yes, massive. I mean, of course. But then you have to kind of look at the ultimate goal, don't you, of what, what, what you're trying to do. And the other thing that you have to be mindful, which I've had to learn, is that there's no point five minutes before dinner, you know, getting into some deep mud play with lots of water when actually everyone needs to get washed and brushed up, ready for dinner. Mm. And there's mud all over the floor. People need their nappies changing. Everyone's crying. And that's just the staff, you know. <laughs> so you, you've got to kind of be a bit sensible. And I, I used to be really stupid about it. But I kind of learnt that you've got to be a little bit sensible about your timings. Yes, yeah, so there's a balance, isn't there? It's always a balance. Mm, it's hard but... to work straight yeah, it's, it's really hard. But I think those are the sorts of things that um, the environment should offer. Mm 